Good afternoon, evening, morning, whenever you are listening to this. AP Lit, nice to talk to you. Um, I'm going to go over the other Paris really briefly so you can check for your understanding if this was the essay you chose to write about um, or if you just wanted to double check and make sure you got it right for your thesis and the narrator practice handout. Um, I apologize if you hear a imaginary garbage truck in the background. Wyatt is playing with his garbage truck. So, um, but that's what's happening right now and this is how it's gonna be. So, um, narrative perspective, remember narrative perspective and um, point of view are often interchangeable terms. So if the question is asking you to identify the point of view or identify the position of the narrator or narrative voice, that's asking you for that first person, second person, third person option. Remember, if you're going to choose third person, there's three different types of third person. It can't just be third. So then you look at the access that our narrator has to the characters. Do they, <laughs> hello, Wyatt, thank you. Do they um, have insight into all the characters' thoughts and feelings, some of them or none of them? And that's going to tell you whether it's objective um, limited or omniscient. Objective meaning they have no insight into any character's thoughts and feelings. It's the most reliable of all narrators. Limited meaning we have the uh, insight into some one or two of the character's thoughts and feelings. And then omniscient meaning you know what everybody's thinking because that narrator knows what everybody's thinking and feeling. Um, this passage was a little bit tricky because three quarters of it is... Um, Third person limited. You get all this is what Carol thinks about Howard and why she accepted his marriage proposal and how um, she feels about them being together. But then all the way right down here, we get a little bit of what Howard thinks. And I think that you could look at structure too and see that the, the speaker or that the passage has one, two, three, four paragraphs about how Carol feels about marriage and their engagement, and then one, two paragraphs about Howard. You could look at that as far as um, trying to answer the prompt as well, but as far as narrator goes, our narrator knows what Carol thinks. We have quotes like, um, she would have imagined it this way. Um, this is what everyone expected and she'd nearly come to believe it herself. Uh, talks about her being under the illusion that in a short time she would be so old no one would ask her again. Um, down here where she has her thoughts of about Howard. Howard, best of all, was sober, old enough to know his own mind and absolutely reliable. And that was all kind of her perspective of him. With great efficiency, nearly at once, she set about the business of falling in love. All of that are thoughts. Uh, all of that is evidence regarding the thoughts and feelings of Carol. And then, I would say, up until that point, we were we we know nothing about what Howard thinks. But then, all of a sudden, you have Howard had no notion of any of this. His sudden proposal, blah blah blah, had been quite out of character. You get what his sister told him that soon you'll be just a person who fills in at dinner. And he saw that picture at once and was deeply moved by it and hastened to get himself a bride. So um, we're looking third person omniscient here. Any of those quotes would work to support that. Uh, and then we're looking at the function of the narrator. Some of you picked up on that too, is the function of this omniscient narrator really helps kind of build some dramatic irony that we know some things as the audience that the characters don't which builds some tension. Maybe Harold doesn't know, or sorry, Howard doesn't know. Have I been calling him Harold this whole time? Oh, Carol, that's where it is. Um, maybe Howard doesn't know what Carol is thinking and she doesn't know what he is thinking, and, but we do, which builds tension for us, the audience, and will eventually cause conflict in between the two. Um, perhaps the narrative perspective reflects the tone of it. This this outside perspective is looking at their relationship from the outside and has this kind of matter-of-fact tone. Um, not super critical of either of them yet, but definitely like reflecting within the tone of the passage. Um, and again, it's all about this idea of a social commentary. That's our big question. We talked a while ago about big question and little question. 
So the big question is how both of them are doing what society wants, but in different ways, right? And so the third person omniscient gives us that clue that they are both trying to do what society wants them to do. Whether successfully or unsuccessfully, we don't know in this passage. Um, so that's it. Good job. Um, if we were going to talk about characterization, then you would want to talk about, you know, what Carol says, how she acts, how she feels, and then what the what details the, um, the narrator provides about Howard. But all of that revolves back into this idea of third-person omniscient, where we know everything that's going on because of this narrator. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. And um, that's all for the other Paris. I will see you back here when we talk about symbolism in a couple of days. Okay, bye.